Well, Delver's Row was certainly an interesting place, and on top of that, it seems that we will have to return there. First thing first, though, we have to go and see Prince Ruhi to see about getting more food shipped to the gullet. And then we will see about this item that Darius the Lean wants me to procure for him. It would seem that going to that place below in Delver's Row might require me to cross Darius, which would probably be bad for our business transaction should I do so and then get him the item he's asked me to get for him. I don't like the idea of working for unsavory types like him, but he hasn't asked me to do anything illegal or immoral. If he had, then I would have turned him down immediately, like I have done so with others. Ernesto, the scoundrel, had asked me to kill the spindle man, and I refused immediately. Well, that is one less lowlife down in Delver's Row, but I don't exactly know if that was a good thing that I did because someone else may simply take his place, and they could be worse. That's the way with bad people, I suppose. One would have to clear out the entire place and either post guards there, or literally make it so no one could ever get down there again, which I assume would be done by having the ceiling brought down over the place, which would end the criminal element in the gullet permanently, or at least one would hope. Well, we've got what we wanted out of Delver's row, at Ishi, least for now. down. Adair, what are you hiding in your pack? Huh. Didn't think Ishii knew how to smoke. <laughs> okay, so I suppose that we can go back to Serpent's Crown now. Just have to find the way out of there. Just up this way. Back to Nekitaka. Oh. This is Nekitaka, but... It doesn't seem to be so to many people who live here. here. The Dawnstars granted Preetly the power to heal the plague folk. I always knew she was a blessing on us. Never doubted her. Surely. So you got the pustule drained? Ugh. Well, not yet. Sounds like elk down here. Something's making a similar noise. Okay, back to Serpent's Crown. Let's go see Prince Aruhi. I hear a set of heavily armored footsteps from down a nearby alley. The narrow streets in this neighborhood are largely deserted at night, and the echoes of heavily armored footfalls carry down the cobbled lanes. A glance around the corner reveals an aging meadowfolk man, garishly dressed in the styling of a der wooden noble. Laplight glints from the rings on his fingers and chains around his thin neck. Damnation! I told you, incompetence, that this was not the right street. The words are slurred, as if the man's tongue is too heavy for his mouth. Several men and women, all too heavily armored for the climate, accompany the man. Apologies, master, if we... Shut up, fool! By Magrin's flame, is it always this hot? I'd pay a thousand dukes for another drink. Hmm. I don't know what they're looking for, but I don't think it's us. I guess we can approach them. They're from the same, kind of the same area where we're from. Deerwood's not exactly my home, but it was just south of where I used to live. One of the guards leans in towards the man. This is not the safest of streets, sir. Perhaps it's your job to keep me safe, not prattle on like a school marm. At my approach, one of the guards puts a gauntleted hand on the man's shoulder, but he twists out from under it. Finally, someone with a thought in their head. He pads towards me, gesturing in broad swipes of the arm as he speaks. These imbeciles have gotten us entirely lost. Can you point the way to... Was it Queen's Birth, I believe? Huh. Okay, I'll give the, uh, the noble directions. I suppose Adair should be the one to do it. The man sighs at Adair's rambling directions. For Magrin's sake, idiots everywhere. All right, good luck then. But the normal woman stares dumbly as we walk away. Adair, what was that about? Well, I do have to say that <laughs> this pretty, the streets are pretty winding and complicated. You just have to half the time that it takes to get from one end to the other is going the right way and trying to not go down the wrong avenues and where there's dead ends and things like that. But you learn. You learn as you go. 
Serpent's Crown. It's late. I don't care. I hope Prince Aruhi is still there. It's not like there's a tavern we can just stay in here. It's just people's estates. Yeah, I also have to get that bounty I was considering earlier. And Natehi, when I finally go into that wizard's mansion, I will return. Oh, wait, this is this is the way. Oh, wait, both are the ways. This is probably this is where the bounty the person giving out the bounties would be. But this is goes to the palace. Is it not the place that I want to be? Clear skies, Mayaru. Oh, this is the one that gives out the bounties. I might the as well talk to The belly of the great eel roars with hunger. Will you help Barati to calm it? He breathes heavily and stares from under a furrowed brow. All right, tell me the bounties you have available. Tangaloa rolls a hungry eye toward Dichila, a valiant captain who scouts for luminous Adra in sacred lands. Barati squeezes his knuckles into their bone weight. I'll take the bounty. Akira. Tangaloa knew it would be so. Dechila sails her voyager Elysio around the waters south of Nikitaka. The great eel hungers for her soul. This man is very extreme. Barati touches his brow and inclines his head. Farewell. Uh, I don't exactly remember where the... Where's the meeting room where I can meet Prince Aruhi? Maybe it is downstairs and I had it all mixed up. Let's go down and see if the prince is down this way. I think this is where we're supposed to be. It's this. Though simple in construction, the sink is clean and tidy. Oh, have we met? The cartographer bites his thumbnail and mutters to himself. Okay. Oh, yes, I remember this. Ooh, forget that. Okay, right, let's go... Let's go see Prince Aruhi is willing to speak with me. What say, Watcher? Aruhi opens his palm and grins. We should talk about the food shortage in the gullet first. Shortage? Are the Raparu not fed the leavings of the Quaru and Mataru? The gullet is in a poor state. There's little enough to go around. Sighing, Prince Aruhi presses his palms together and nods. It is no wonder how Delver's Row won the love of my people, I say, by feeding them when we could not. Find us solutions instead of old problems, I say. The Raparu, the Raparu need their queen, won't she step in? Ikira, for what would she sit on her hands if she had the time? Or the resources? Aruhi pierces me with an annoyed look. The tribes beyond our city look to her as well, and the problems are as numerous as fish in the sea. I can imagine. Again, you bring this up. Speak on, I say. Prince Aruhi sighs and opens his palms. Back to my other questions. If you have more to say, I am not above listening. I want to discuss the black market in the gullet. I expect results, Watcher. Have you gotten to the bottom of Delver's Row? <laughs> the bottom? Is that what you meant? Literally get to the bottom. If you don't mind, I'll report in later. Kira, but keep our water shaper out of trouble. Aruhi nods to Takehu and waves me off. So that wasn't what we were sent down there to do. Okay. For what do you seek the royal brother? I have questions about you and the Juana. Ikera, both topics I know well. Aruhi smiles and uh, inclines his head. How does the case system work here in Nekataka? It is the same in the city as anywhere in the Deadfire. Mataru judge our souls at birth and organize us for the survival of the tribe. I'm not the first to say it. 
But Nekataka has more walls than beaches, more roads than clearings, and more people than fish. Nowhere in the city does a Raparu sit around the same fire as a Mataru. Nekataka tests our traditions, I say. Don't you see that as a contradiction? What man or woman of the Isles does not? Aruhi chuckles and shakes his head. Our ancestors built this place. We are the hermit crab who occupies a fallen shell. It is for my sister and her priest to judge the fit. Ruhi shrugs, squinting up at the court's high ceiling. You and Anikaza represent the Kahanga tribe. Akira, as the largest and most prosperous of the Deadfire tribes, the Kahanga have some authority to speak for the others. I say Onikaza and I are large stones in a tide pool, standing tall as the water rises to our necks. You don't seem to think much of the trading companies, do you? My sister has mastered the diplomat's tongue, and I am foolish to give her frustrations a loud voice. He sheepishly scratches the back of his head. But Ikera, I pray every day that Ngati tests the outsiders against her tallest waves and longest serpents. Huh. The ocean is a few monsters short since the Armada showed up. I think we passed your fish god's trial. Shoti puffs out a heated breath. I... quite so, Maya. Prince Aruhi turns away, blushing. Wait, I think he likes her. <laughs> what do you think of your sister's rule? We agree on much, I say. The prosperity of the Juana, our burden to appease the gods. Hmm. Aruhi clears his throat and cranes his neck to tell if anyone is eavesdropping. In the trading companies, Onikaza sees Worika testing us, weighing who deserves the Isles. Could very well be. I see Ngate sending krakens of gold and iron against our ship, but arming us with a single harpoon. Hmm. Ngate is a Juana trickster goddess with a humanoid body and the head of an anglerfish who is thought to lure mariners either into or out of trouble at her whim. They often worship her as Andra making the Juana only the only people who believe that Andra has a physical manifestation. The gods will judge us by our persistence and our grace before foes. Aruhi inclines his head to Maya. She frowns and glances over her shoulder. Hmm. But she doesn't seem to like him. That's odd. Maybe it's quite possible that these um, Rawatayan Rawatai, the people of the Rawatai, do not think the, these um, tribals are worth very much. Otherwise, I mean, that's he's very prestigious, you would think, if he shows interest in her, and she has no one. Uh, she would be interested back, but no. Um, I find that interesting. I don't know her very well, so perhaps the time will, I'll get a chance in the future. Speak to her more on it. Okay, so, I mean, there's bounties out at sea that I would love to go and do. But I am... Yeah, bounties. Curious about what um, Darius... If I can find where I wrote it down. I just have to look. Alright, I found it. It says to get the uh, cornet for Darius from Takano's villa. On Serpent's Crown, that's exactly where I am. And Tucano has an estate just off to our left. Well, the way to feed the Ruparu down in the gullet, after reading through my notes, is also to go to the Sacred Stair to speak with the Dawn Stars there. So I assume that that's the only thing left to do, but I will see about what's what we can do here to Kano's estate. Remember, I'm going to be diplomatic about this. Practicing fighting. We're all Juana here, of course. Uh, sure. Hello? An older Mataru man stands ringed by younger Juana, apprentice, or pupils, it seems, 
His robes shimmer with quartz beading, and his perfume announces his presence from across the room. Yet beneath his finery, he looks like a fighter gone to seed. Disused muscles flop from his arms, and flab pads him like so many layers of silk. He looks up and notices me. Greetings, and welcome to my home. He gestures to the lavish room, puffing his broad chest out a little more. For what do you come to my villa? Beaming, he spreads his arms wide. Nice house. Be a shame if someone nudged it over the mountainside. Really, Maya? <laughs> you Rowatians have the strangest sense of humor. <laughs> he laughs loudly, but panic flickers in his eyes. I'm gonna read Takano's soul. My essence slips from my body, and Takano's soul enfolds mine like a warm, oily thing. As his fears and questions seep into me, my perspective shifts to his. At first, I worried this metal folk before me had been sent by the Valian debt collectors. Oh, okay, so he's talking about me from his perspective. It would be a low trick, taking advantage of my famous hospitality, but then those Valians are crafty. Perhaps if my villa were bigger, then they might know me as a man worthy of respect. At least I have the shell. I tuck it away not only for safekeeping, but also because I am a little ashamed of it. How could such a simple, ugly thing be sacred to a god? But it was a gift from the queen, and so I keep it. My gaze strays to the wall. Yes, I must knock down that se section there and install a wide, grand window. Once I have the money. I retreat from Takano's soul to find him watching me with a placid smile. So, he doesn't seem like a bad person, just a little... The word isn't uncomfortable. Um, he's not happy about his lack of wealth and larger house. But he's, for some reason, he's uncomfortable with the item he has that I came to get. I don't know why. I hear you have a rare Andrite artifact. The Cornet of Waves. It is a conch shell, but very important. To receive it is the highest honor. He nods vigorously, jiggling the loose flesh of his neck. He sounds like he's trying to convince himself more than me. The Queen gave it to me as thanks for my years of service. I was her personal bodyguard when she was a child, you know. He folds his hands over his considerable paunch. Why is the Cornet of Waves so special? Because it is sacred to the Goddess Andra. Everyone knows it is a privilege to have. Okay. He clasps his interlaced fingers together, his knuckles glowing white. He glances towards his apprentices. A carrot to Kano. Everyone knows it is a sign of favor. She snaps too, her response as sudden and automatic as though Takano had just given her an order. He gives the apprentice an appreciative nod. I am misled if holding a shell is all it takes to earn Ngati's favor. Takehu tosses his hair and chuckles to himself. Andra is the goddess of loss. Legends say she calls missing things to her with the music of the conch. Truly? Then I must hope she calls nothing back from me. <laughs> his booming laugh has a nervous edge as he glances around his fine home. Generations ago, there was a similar shell. When the old city sank, Andra's faithful gathered around that cornet and prayed for deliverance. He leans close. A storyteller's grin spreading across his face. An ominous sing-song creeps into his voice. But Andra is not a goddess of mercies. Instead of lifting them from the ruin, she pulled them down with the shell and said they would rise when it did. Oh my. He chuckles and leans back, clasping his hands over his generous midsection. That is the story, anyway. Macabre, no? His eyes twinkle with glee. Yeah, I'd say it is a little macabre. Um, so about about what because makes it so special? Juana have used conch shells to communicate for centuries. This is likely one such device. What a noble purpose. His expression falls, as if he was hoping for a grander story. Generations ago, there yes, was I know. a simple... You told me about that. that is the story, anyway. Macabre, no? Yes, it is. I need the cornet of waves. But it was a gift from the queen. 
It is unusual for a man of my standing to give such a thing away. Hmm. I can pay you for it. I am not some quarrel merchant. I do not sell my treasures. Hmm. Yeah, but I know what his weakness is. Actually, with a little coin, you could really fix this place up. Install a window over there, for starters. Then you speak of a barter. That is different. What do you propose? <laughs> it helps to read people. He twists a ring around his finger as he fixates on the elaborate stained glass. Each pane must cost a small fortune. Yeah, I don't quite think I have the coin for this. I'm not sure what he's be asking. But perhaps 5,000 and all I have is 1,900. Perhaps another time. Uh, let's discuss this another time. Very well. Farewell. Now I know what to do when I have more coin. But as for now, I'm not going to steal it or threaten him. That I don't consider to be right. Which leaves us with only one thing left to do, and that's to go to the Sacred Stair. What all do you write in those reports of yours, Maya? Did you detail the Watcher? What about me? I may have told the company one or two choice details about you. For real? You thought me worth noting in your politic papers? <laughs> Maybe I'll make my temple proud yet. <laughs> so you're flattered. Interesting. Guess I'll add that to the next report. She's very, uh... <laughs> wow. It is getting late, um, and it'll take a few hours to get over there. I don't think... There's not a place to... St well, I could stay at the baths. It's expensive, a thousand cr There's either the gullet, which is sort of on the way. I suppose we don't really have much of a choice. It's going to take travel time to go wherever we go. The gullet, and then we'll go to the sacred stair in the morning. I guess we're going to stay at the hole again. <laughs> Yay. anything special will happen tonight. So let's rest and we'll go to the sacred stair next. Well, the sacred stair is a fairly big place and we didn't properly explore. There's a temple of Magran, hanging sepulchers, temple of Barath. Well, spire of the soul seekers, spire of the, I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to look for them. Interesting place. Okay, let's go into the Spire of the Soul Seekers. Oh. Thick treaties on variety of animancy related topics clutter the desk. This ledger contains a meticulously log list of names, dates, and measurements. So, what is. Who's here? Is, oh. Merla, it's so humid. Let's get someone to conjure up a breeze. It's pretty humid in here. It's a hot day. Um, this is just a bunch of animancers. Let's go up. See if what's up here. Wow, look at that piece of Audra. Look, we have guests. Uh, not really. Merla, burned. A steady white-haired elf frowns down at a table covered in a coiled copper wires with glimmering shards of Audra. Her gloved hands smooth her well-tailored Valian coat as she mumbles under her breath. Apparently absorbed in her work, the Animaster doesn't acknowledge my presence. Clear my throat. The woman spins on me, blinking rapidly behind a pair of brass-rimmed spectacles. 
Her bright carmine eyes and paper white skin mark her as one of the Glam Felon. Oh, one of those. Hello, my apologies. I didn't see you there. He, her, Aedirian, uh bears a clear, crisp, but difficult to place accent. The pale elf examines me warily, unease clear in the set of her shoulders. Are you all right? I am fine. Is there some reason I shouldn't be? One of her pale eyebrows arches. She tugs at her gloves and looks away from me. Calm settles about her like a burial shroud. Which is not to say I do not appreciate your concern. I do. She settles her spectacles on her nose. As she does so, I notice her hands shaking. Well, something is wrong. I, like the other scholars here, am engaged in the study of the soul sciences. Was there something you needed, or may I return to my studies? Her thin lips settle into a crooked smile. As she speaks, a drop of blood rolls out of the elf's nose and drips onto her lips. She pulls a handkerchief from her coat pocket and wipes away the blood without a word. You burned yourself. I had a mishap with my machinery, but all is well now. The details are unimportant. I wish only to return to my studies. In any case, why are you here? Hmm. How'd you come to be in Nekitaka? It is a mundane story. I sought out the ship with the longest oversea route departing from the Republics and booked passage. Why? Though her words are flat and her voice affectless, Yidwin is not calm. She shifts her weight from foot to foot and looks anywhere but at my face. She has the restless, nervous air of a horse about to bolt. I had intended to perform a handful of experiments regarding the nature of souls that could only be done safely at sea. Huh. I know of no animacy that must be done strictly at sea. A fellow researcher. Then perhaps you will understand. Understand what? I've long been fascinated by the nature of entropy. Nothing is unaffected by the passage of time, excepting souls. Supposedly. Sure. Sure, she smirks. Is it not possible that repeated reincarnation damages a soul? Could the process of reincarnation itself be responsible for some of the many ills that plague the souls of Kith? Interesting idea. Hmm. I don't know. I deduced that it was possible to escape the cycle. Escape Bareth's grasp. To remove one's soul from the wheel. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to say that's utter nonsense. I suppose I was wrong to expect more from you. She heaves a great sigh and straightens her cravat. Hmm. Stop dancing around my questions. Tell me what's going on. If, if you insist. She takes a step back at my sudden request and clears her throat. With the aid of a device of copper and Audra, I have uncoupled my soul from my body. What? Freeing myself of Barris' wheel. I belong only to myself now. Are you serious? What possessed you to do this to yourself? My body and soul are my own. Why should I not do with them as I wish? She squares her shoulders and fixes me with a glare. Who are you to say? Edwin's carmine eyes cling to me, all set in a small frown. I'm a watcher. I see into the souls of others, and if necessary, pass judgment on what I find there. Truly. Her brows rise high in her forehead. She leans towards me, her eyes fixed on mine, suddenly intent. Tell me, what do you see when you peer into the souls of Kith? Do you see their misdeeds? Their evil thoughts? Their unkindnesses, perversions, cruelties? She blinks, frowns, and breaks eye contact. I apologize. I... I have always felt a kinship with your kind. Having witnessed the very worst in Kith has left me keenly attuned to recognizing ill intent. She quickly shakes her head. Perhaps you would be amenable to me traveling with you on something of a permanent basis? <laughs> she cringes. Hmm. What can you do for me? This blade is not merely for show. Oh. Her, her, I was thinking more of her part in science, though. Um, 
Not really a, a, a fighter. Her fingers grace the basket hilt of the rapier slung at her side. There are no end of swordsmen in the dead fire, though, right? I, however, possess some little sway over the minds of others. She grins wolfishly. Why do you want to travel with me? I have a vested interest in Luminous Audra, but acquiring it here can be expensive. What about this giant piece right here? Isn't that enough for you? You have a ship of your own and are clearly well-traveled. I suspect I would encounter more Luminous Audra with you than I would on the streets of Nekataka. Hmm. Welcome aboard, then. Truly? She blinks, her mouth hanging half open. Whoa, you sure about that? I am not, but I can't see the harm as long as she, uh... Doesn't do any more experiments on anyone else without their permission, at least. Thaklaut, traveler. I am grateful. An Orjhoma expression of gratitude. She clasps her my hand in hers, pumps it quickly, and releases. After a quick pack down of the various pockets sewn into her coat, Edwin nods sharply and rests a hand on the hilt of her rapier. I have all that I need. May depart at your leisure. Her lips curl into a coy little smile, and she says no more. I didn't actually expect this, but... Okay. Hmm. Now we've got a bunch of people that... No, I mean, I've had Eloth and uh, Seraphin with me for a while, but Constantin and, and Idwin, I don't know. I like the group that I currently have. Uh, I'll see about it in the future. Okay, so... Clearly, this place is just for the Animancers, but we have uh, some searching around this area to do, to find the, um, oh, what was it called? Yeah, we have to find uh, Sewen at the Temple of Gon in the Sacred Stair, which is where we are, so we'll have to do some searching around for that place.